Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel talking about Johnny Engineer Galt, the hero of Ayn Rand's book Atlas Shrugged. So, Johnny Engineer Galt was the Atlas who shrugged. I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, the Atlas who shrugged not. And this is Lesson 49, Part 2 of the Atlas Shrugged Not. John Galt finally gets his make his speech to the world. And it falls as flat as the upcoming speech by Proteus to the UN in my next post. So, he says, you have allowed them the excuse that the end justifies the means, and that the horrors they practice are means to nobler ends. The truth is that these horrors are their ends. Uh, to fear, to face an issue, is to believe that the worst is true. And that which you do not know is not a moral charge against you, but that which you refuse to know is an account of infamy growing in your soul. Well, I'd rather say not knowing is ignorance, refusing to know is stupidity. And I'm speaking to those among you who have retained some sovereign shred of their soul, unsold and unstamped to the order of others. And I wonder how many such souls remain unsold. People he thinks there are out there among the starving masses, fortunate enough not to be under the orders of others. Not a lot, I bet. So, he says, if there was an honest, rational desire to learn what is wrong with the world, you are the man whom I wish to address. The, uh, those who are making an effort to fail to understand me are not a concern of mine. Boy, does that strike a chord with me. People who make an effort to not understand me. Like poker chips are better money than money. So, I'm speaking to those who desire to live and to recapture the honor of their soul. Now that you know the truth about your world, stop supporting your own destroyers. The evil of the world is made possible by nothing but the sanction you give it. And I say, and the inaction John Galt uh, gives it. Withdraw your sanction. Withdraw your support. Do not try to live on your enemy's terms or to win at a game where there's, they are setting the rules. Do not seek the favor of those who have enslaved you. Well, that's all fine and dandy from a guy with a nice little self-sufficient retreat in the Rockies. I wonder how the starving masses are taking a suggestion that Daddy quit his only part-time job. Do not beg for alms from those who have robbed you, be it subsidies, loans, or jobs. Do not join their team to recoup what they've taken by helping them to rob your neighbors. Well, better to starve, you know? Sure, some have to starve, but not John Galt. You know, go on strike as I did, he says. Well, striking is such a stupid plea. Social credit engineer Major Clifford Douglas laughed at striking as an option. He, in my Douglas text, you'll find at page 37, he says, where one party to controversy can only obtain the means of subsistence, money, by working, while the other party can continue for a long time by drawing checks on institutions which can create their deposits, the right to strike, to refrain from working, amounts to the right to commit suicide. Engineer Douglas, what he thinks of John Galt's great idea of going on strike. Striking to death is just such a stupid idea. Certainly not want, not with this John the Engineer will plead when I get my shot again at the United Nations. John Galt had rich friends to go with his talent, you know. What are starving people supposed to do without his advantages, you know? So, uh, since you're a captive, act as a captive. Do not help them pretend that you're free. Well, most people don't know that debts are the chains in the biblical yoke of oppression. Christ showed us how to live. But who's pretending they're free? If you find the chance to vanish into the wilderness, build a productive life of your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. By starting rich, no doubt. Enough to afford a caravan into the woods. When the looter's state collapses, deprived of the best of its slaves, when it falls to a level of impotent chaos and dissolves into starving robber gangs fighting to rob one another, then, and on that day, will we return. So, and we're supposed to be happy to see the guys who sat out the battle of the slaves against the looters, right? Well, this Spartacus won't leave his slaves revolt away from the battlefield into the mountains because a few privileged elite slaves say it's better that way to sit out the war on strike. We're supposed to be happy to have Ayn Rand's engineers come back after the war is over, the guys who ducked the fight. 
So page 993, fight for the value of your person, fight for the virtue of your pride, fight for the essence for which is man, for his sovereign rational mind. Yeah, by striking and hiding out in the woods till the destruction's over, that's fighting. You will win when you are ready to renounce, pronounce the oath I've taken at the start of my battle. Go on, go strike myself to death. No, no, battle is really the wrong word for running away and hiding until the storm is passed. And for those who wish to know the day of my return, I shall now repeat it to the hearing of the world. I swear by my life and my love of it that I will never leave for the sake of another man, live for the sake of another man, nor ask another man to live for mine. Well, well and dandy for a guy who can escape the catastrophe to a self-sufficient retreat in the mountains, but this is no prescription what ails the average Joe on earth. Galt's demand to the government? Start by abolishing income taxes. Well, I told you. Everybody borrowed 10 from the pump house, everybody's got to bring 11 back. And no amount of splashing in the pool, take from this pile to this pile, is going to change the imbalance in the pump house. So John the Engineer Galt, who, you know, uh, by the way, who's going to handle the snow plows and the roads, you know? Uh, so, fire your government employees. Yeah, no more forest rangers, cops, firemen, doctors, nurses. Fire our employees. Ayn Rand's Johnny Engineer's bright idea. So that's unnecessary when things are better done by government. But if these are Johnny Engineer Galt's best suggestions, well, he's a lesser engineer who didn't identify the malfunction in the economic system, the instability, the positive feedback, because he didn't determine the blueprint of the machine like I did. You go to johntermell.com slash bankmath.htm and you can see the blueprint of the banking system. So, the blind chaos of civil war that men were fighting with no concept of their goals. Well, the guys with the right concept are in hiding, right? So, they could not see the world beyond the mountains. There was only a void of darkness and rock now that the crash has come. But the darkness was hiding the ruins of a continent. The roofless homes, the rusting tractors, the lightless streets, the abandoned rail. But far in the distance, on the edge of the earth, a small flame was waving in the wind. The defiant, stubborn flame of Wyatt's torch. That's where they're all hanging out. Twisting, being torn, and regaining its hold. Not to be uprooted or extinguished. It seemed to be calling and waiting for the words John Galt was now to pronounce. The road is clear, said Galt. We are going back to the world. He raised his hand over the desolate earth. He traced the sign of the dollar. So, Johnny Engineer Galt, ceding authority over the mechanical money system to the looters. Not my idea of what a political warrior would do. Not my idea what a responsible engineer who took an oath to an intent to integrity of engineering design would do either. So this is Johnny Engineer Termel, an atlas who didn't shrug, signing off on this article I posted May 11, 2004. So just remember, atlas shrugged not.